Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to a new video. So I'm back then, I apologize for my absence. I know it was like two or three weeks in which I was gone and didn't upload a single video. Um, it's just been a crazy, crazy busy period for me. There's typically two really busy periods throughout the year. Number one being summer, which is now in the UK. And then number two is obviously Christmas. So having like two, three weeks off, um, it gave me a chance to think about the kind of content I want to put out. Um, and it dawned on me then that I actually started dropshipping myself almost to the month three years ago so it was actually July 2016 in which I started dropshipping which gave me the idea for this video so I started dropshipping then in July 2016 and then it was December 2016 so six months later in which I was able to quit my job so the objective of this video then is to give you guys the tools and the action plan to go out there um, and essentially help you achieve your goals depending on what they are speaking to some people they want to quit their job and do dropshipping full-time but then speaking to others, they simply want to make an extra three, four, five hundred pounds a month. So whatever it is, then it, the goal of this video is to help you achieve that. Before we jump into it, though, I just want to very quickly say a massive thank you for all the recent support and new subscribers to the channel. Um, since I was gone, we hit over 7000 subs, which is just absolutely crazy. So thank you very much. Please do keep the support coming. In fact, I looked at the stats of the people who watch my videos and like only 40 percent of my views come from people who have subscribed so if you haven't subscribed yet please make sure you hit that subscribe button for weekly training on Shopify and Facebook ads and with that being said then guys let's get straight into the action plan first things first then guys I want to start with some proof and some evidence um, if you're an OG subscriber you will have seen this before but for all the new subscribers then I'm just going to take you through those first six months of what dropshipping looked like for me so this is an old store then so I don't mind showing you or asking any questions about this whatsoever um, however, I do like to keep my current stores private for obvious reasons. Um, so this was, in fact, let's go back to July then, so you can see exactly from the very beginning. Um, so £350 the first month. Second month was 1200 more or less. Uh, moving into September, we had £3,500. So things were growing pretty steadily for me. And then October was actually where things started to go a bit crazy. And I encountered issues like my PayPal account being put on hold. Um, the most difficult thing at this point, though, was cash flow because I didn't have a lot of money to start my business. Um, so I had to start scaling back, essentially, which you can see in November. Um, I only did 10K in sales. At this point as well, you can see there's a new product creeping in. So these sales were a combination of a product I was sourcing in bulk and they were drop shipping products as well. The reason I decided to start sourcing products in bulk was purely because everybody knows the drop shipping delivery times can be sometimes up to like three, four weeks. I wanted to capitalize on the most profitable and busy period of the year, which was November and December. So I decided to source some products in bulk. And even though my revenue was like half compared to what October was, um, I was making a significant amount of money more which is actually a good thing a profitable business is always good because in the uk once you hit i believe it's eighty five thousand in revenue now then you have to become that registered so until you get to that point then it's always best practice to make your business as profitable as possible because once you do reach that point then of course you're gonna lose out on 20 percent of your bottom line so here we are then in the beginning of the action plan before we jump into the three core elements which i'm going to explain in a second um, I want to start with expectations because dropshipping, there's plenty of false realities created through certain people's YouTube channels, through certain forums, etc. There's a lot of um, whatever going around. So I want to start with some realistic expectations. And that is that dropshipping is definitely not easy and it's not guaranteed just because it's a cheap business to start and you can scale very quickly. It doesn't mean that if you throw up a Shopify store in 30 minutes, throw some products on there and start running Facebook ads, then you're guaranteed to make money because that is just not the case in reality only a very small percentage of people will um, actually achieve their goals through drop shipping but on the flip side of that then it is possible it is 100 percent possible just make sure you start slow and focus on the smaller goals first so for example then if you want to make ten thousand dollars then before you do that you have to make a hundred dollars then you make a thousand dollars then you make five thousand dollars and then you make ten thousand focus on the smaller goals first and build things from there now you might be thinking ten thousand dollars is a lot of money or twenty thousand thirty thousand whatever it is but it's not actually 
actually as much as you think because dropshipping and e-com or e-commerce sorry is 365 days a year so when you break it down like this as I'm about to explain it's not actually as much money as you might think so the majority of people who watch my channel then are from the UK and US hence these as two as examples I did a quick um, Google search and I found out that in the UK in 2018 at least last year the average wage wage was twenty eight thousand pounds before tax in dropship, and then this is seventy seven pounds per day. So that's seven days a week. So seventy seven pounds in sales per day is not actually a lot, um, to be honest with you. On the flip side, then across the pond in the U.S., the average wage was forty seven thousand U.S. dollars. This was before tax. To do that same amount of money in sales, so before tax or product cost, etc., we're going to be working those out in a second. Then that is one hundred twenty eight dollars in sales per day. So that kind of illustrates you don't have to be doing thousands of dollars per day um, to make some pretty decent money at this. So just to give you an example, then of what you would have to do to achieve these numbers before tax. So quick. So basically basically to earn the same amount of money if you sold if you have a product that you sell for $30 um, let's say you average a Facebook cost per purchase of $12, which is pretty achievable to be honest um, for a product of that price. The product would cost you $8 from AliExpress, wherever you source it again, a realistic number that leaves approximately $10 profit per sale. So to replace your wage then, if you're earning the average wage in the UK, you would only have to sell eight products per day to make 28 grand a year before tax. Um, with if you do it through a business as well, then taxes are a lot less than what you would pay with personal tax. So you'd actually be better off if you could do that amount. And same for US, you'd only have to do 13 sales per day in the US to replace the average wage. So again, um, it's not actually as much as you might think. And just to reiterate then, when you break it down like this, sale per sale, day per day, then it's actually much more realistic to achieve. So many people go out there straight away and think, I need to be doing a thousand dollars per day in sales. When you actually do the maths, um, you only have to be making like two, three hundred dollars or pounds per day in sales to be able to make enough money to replace the average wage. Um, so just consider that then when you're going through and creating your dropshipping business. Like it said in the beginning, just focus on the smaller goals first. Focus on making say fifty pounds a day or fifty dollars a day, then a hundred, then two hundred, and so on. So that being said then, let's get into today's training, which is gonna be on the three core elements. And what they are then is a product, is a Shopify store and a Facebook ads. Every single successful Shopify business will do these three core elements correctly. If they fail to do one correctly, then the whole system breaks down. So for example then, you could have the next best thing in the world in terms of a product, but if you have a dodgy Shopify store, then nobody's gonna buy that product because they won't trust the source. And on the flip side of that, you could have the, you could have a really good product. You could spend 10 grand on a really professional and significant Shopify store. But then if you're targeting the wrong audience or if you've got a rubbish Facebook ad, it's not going to drive the traffic and you're not going to make the sale. So you must do all three things of these things correctly. Just to mention quickly as well, these are the three core elements and fundamentals in which my econ academy is based on. Um, so obviously today will be a good introduction into these, but if you want a more detailed with a ton more information, resources etc make sure you check out my ecom academy um, i've recently updated the page as well to include some um, testimonials from some of the students who have enrolled so make sure you check out the link in the video description anyway with that being said then let's carry on and um, the first thing we're going to focus on then is the product and when it comes to the product the main key to keep in your mind is that passion is key you need to pick a product that people are passionate about and as it says in brackets here this is closely linked to the audience so the reason it's linked to the audience then is because you could have a product that people are really passionate about but then if it's within an audience that people are passionate about if that makes sense then nobody's going to buy it so for example then I've got some products here and some questions to run through um, just to give you an example I always like to show you guys examples to illustrate the point which I'm trying to put across so here are two completely different products this one, this product on the left, in fact, is the best selling product on AliExpress within the kitchen niche. You can see there's nearly 22,000 units sold. And then these are just some pug socks. And as you can see, only 86 pairs of these have been sold. So this one on the left by far outsells this one on the right. Now, this is why you've always got to take the 
amount of orders on AliExpress with a pinch of salt because AliExpress isn't just full of dropshippers. There's, there's a lot of end users on there. Just because they're on AliExpress doesn't mean they'll sell well with Facebook ads. You have to pick a product that is suitable for Facebook ads. And what do I mean by this? So first things first then, just we'll run through these questions and answer them along with me and see how many you get right. So which one will get the most engagement on Facebook? Which one of these two products do you think will get the most engagement? Um, now, obviously it's just my opinion, but I think the one on the right, purely because um, certainly out of the people I've met in my lifetime, people are a lot passionate about dogs than they are about, say, sponge holders. I mean, you might know differently. It depends what kind of crowd um, you hang around in. Question number two then, which one will people get excited about? Um, again, depending on who you speak to, the chances are if you have a pug, then you're going to be more excited about some pug socks than you are about something that like a place to put your sponges, if you like. Question number three then, which one will people have a stronger connection to? So even if it's the avid, say, chef or somebody who likes baking and they spend a lot of time in the kitchen versus somebody who actually owns a pug, um, which product is going to have a stronger connection to its audience? And again, it's just my opinion, but I think the pug socks. If somebody owns a pug and they see these socks, especially if the pug looks like that, then they're going to have a really strong connection to it. Now, these questions are really important and you should be asking yourself these questions about your product because these are what make a product suitable for Facebook. You have to take advantage of Facebook being a social media platform. The fact that you can reach people for free. And as it says here, boring things don't go viral. The chances of getting these sponges to go viral um, is pretty slim because it's not the sort of thing that gets attention or people would be that passionate about. Um, and as it says here, people are passionate about niche things so the more specific the better so to give you an example take into account these socks um, people are passionate about dogs people love dogs but people are even more passionate about certain dog breeds especially if they own that dog if that makes sense and facebook is all about capturing attention because people aren't on there to buy things they're on there to essentially socialize with their friends so the stronger connection the more excited and the more engagement your ad can get then the better chance you have of success period that's all there is to it moving on to point number two then core element number two which is your shopify store it doesn't matter how good your product is or how good the traffic is you're driving to your store if you have a dodgy store um, nobody's going to trust you and nobody's going to buy from you so some points to consider then always start with a general store every time unless you're passionate about your niche and the reason i say that then is it comes down to what your goals are as well if you want to be doing drop shipping for the next 20 years choose a niche you're passionate about and just stick with it because everything works if you commit to it for a long enough amount of time if you just want to make some quick money over the course of the next 12 months two years whatever it is follow the money go with the general store because it will allow you to make money quicker because you can test more products and for everybody who says general stores don't work then here's three really good examples these are all shopify stores they're all drop shipping stores and they're all general stores and these were the average visits per month over the course of the last six months so feel free to check these out go use those stores as design inspiration um, but then here's just some kind of like key points points to consider to make sure that you're on the right track. Now, obviously these points won't apply to everybody, um, but these are the ones that I recommend you stick to unless you have a background in design, um, in web design, etc. because the amount of stores I reviews and they have like pink and yellow checkered backgrounds or they have black backgrounds, um, it just doesn't work unless it's done professionally. So simple is always best. Just stick to a white background, stick to some sort of sans serif, sand serif font. Personally, I use Helvetica through pretty much I think there's one store in which I don't. All the others use Helvetica. Stick to black or gray text. Again, I looked, I reviewed somebody's store the other day and they had a pink background with yellow text and it was impossible to read their product descriptions. And that is just a massive no-no. It will put people off straight away. All that money you've spent on Facebook ads will be pretty much for nothing. So stick to black or gray text and then blue or orange buttons. Just keep it simple. And then of course, just make sure you have the required trust information I call it trust information because people will look for this information before they trust you. So you need an FAQ, the commonly asked questions from 
from customers you need an about us page take some time on these and use it as an opportunity to build that rapport with your customers and then have a tracking page a tracking page is more powerful than you think because it shows to customers that they have a safe place to come and find out where that order is finally then a paid theme will help um, especially if you're not very experienced when it comes to web design some of the basic themes on Shopify can look very basic um, so a paid theme will help but on the flip side of that, they're not 100% necessary. So you don't need a paid theme um, to be successful, but it will help. Moving on to the third and final core element then, which is Facebook ads. Of course, if you've got the best store in the world and the best product in the world, you need to drive the best traffic in the world as well if you want the best chance of success. So number one then is when it comes to creating your Facebook ads, use the Facebook ad library to spy on competitors. So for example, I just showed you three general stores. You can put their store name into the Facebook ad library and it will show you all the different ads that they're currently running that you can then go ahead. You can steal their products if you want, as long as they're not um, trademarked or patented. You can copy their ad design. You can do whatever you want. And of course, if you're fortunate enough to come across a store that has a short um, bitly link like this we can copy the link and we'll put it into our url bar put a plus sign on the end and it's going to give us an idea then of how much traffic or how many people are actually clicking on this ad and it gives you a wealth of information it tells you where those clicks are coming from um, and a bunch of other info too etc etc you guys can go out um, and find that information yourself Number two then, run ads from a Facebook page that's branded the same as your store. Um, some people might think this is obvious, but again, I've come across it before where people don't do this. Same for the next point as well. Send the traffic direct to your product page. People get distracted too easily nowadays from WhatsApps, Instagram DMs. Um, it could be their grandma ringing them. It could be a whole wealth of different ways they can get distracted so basically you want to make it as quick and easy as possible for somebody to make a purchase moving on to the next point then which is focus on the content so ie then the image or the video the text part so the actual ad copy what i call it um, is very minimal to be honest it's not what's going to capture somebody's attention it's going to be the image or video so just keep the text to a minimal but just make sure obviously that you include a um, call to action so for example just keep it simple get yours here with an arrow and then a bit dot lead link i always recommend using these bitly links just because it tidies it up you can put the whole link um, and text on one line and you can also name the link as well so it looks quite professional Next thing then, an important um, note is that do not rush your ads. So many people are so eager and they're willing to rush and cut corners and put up a cheap crappy ad that just in return produces no results. So don't rush your ad. Take the time to create a decent video. You can either buy the products yourself and then film it or buy the product and ship it to a professional video ad creator on Fiverr. You can pick up pretty decent um, videographers for about $50. Moving into the last few points then, um, if you go ahead and you're going down the video ad route, make sure your video ad has sound purely because it's an extra sense um, to appeal um, to your audience. So when it comes to advertising on Facebook, it's all about getting people's attention. And the way you do that is by appealing to people's senses. And you think about all the different senses people have. They have sight, um, they have um, hearing, um, taste. Obviously you can't do that through a Facebook ad, but basically the more senses you appeal to, then the better chance you have of getting somebody's attention. Number two then, just make sure, pretty simple and obvious, but I have to say it, and that's clearly show the product being used and the benefits of using it. There's no better way to advertise a product than it being um, actually used in the video. If you take, for example, Nike, um, if you, I challenge you now to go and find a Nike ad where they talk about the, um, where they actually talk about the product and in the fact of saying our shoes are made out of this material and it can do this for you they never do that they just show the products being used on a track or whatever it is um, so just make sure you actually clearly show the product moving into the image ad then 
Again, some obvious points, but some fundamental mistakes I see some people making. Make sure the image ad is of high quality. You can preview the ad. You can send a notification to your phone so you can see what it looks like on your phone. Just make sure you've got a high quality image. Clearly show the product from the best angle so people aren't second guessing what the product is or what it does. And offer an incentive offer as well. So it must be valid. To give you an example, then we can go back to the shopping network. You can see they've got clearly here, buy one, get one free. It's just an, an another incentive to try and sell your product. Mm -hmm. Moving into the audience aspect though, so first things first when you're starting out, you don't want to overwhelm um, your pixels to so start with small audiences and think quality over quantity. You need the initial data before you scale. If you try and scale straight away and you don't have the initial data, then basically you're trying to scale. If you have no purchases and you try and scale, then you're tr essentially trying to scale on no previous data. So how can you expect to get those purchases if you haven't got them to begin with, if that makes sense? So just think quality over quantity when beginning. Moving into point number three then, always narrow slash flex um, your audience when interest targeting. So if you have a base interest, make sure you click narrow audience and then include another interest in there. Point number four then, as sales begin to come in, scale vertically and horizontally by broadening your interests. So instead of saying going for specific dog breeds, you could just go for dogs overall and that would be an example of broadening your interest. You can include more countries. So if you focus on the US, include the UK, include Canada, Australia, New Zealand, um, some European countries too. You can also use the existing data when you have it to create lookalike audiences and obviously the other obvious way of scaling is simply to increase your budget. Moving into the last couple of points then guys, if you're still with me, thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Um, I apologize. I feel like I've been talking for like three hours, um, but hopefully you guys are still watching and hopefully um, even more so you're finding it valuable up to this point. So second from last then, focus on one to three ad sets and put the majority of your budget through them purely because if you spread yourselves too thin, fit thinly, um, this leads to your ad sets actually never optimizing. So this is information from Facebook themselves. Ad sets optimize on an ad set level and you need to spend and achieve a X amount of conversions before they start to optimize. So if you have if you have 10 ad sets and you spend £10 on each one, not a single one of them is going to have enough data to optimize. Whereas if you just focused on one and put all £100 through it, then you have a better chance of it optimizing, becoming profitable and producing um, good results basically. And with that being said then guys, that is pretty much the video completed. As I mentioned, if you're still watching, thank you very much. Um, I can't say it enough. The support for the channel has been absolutely awesome. I really, really, really do appreciate it. Please do keep it coming. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that like button. Um, and if you want more training, more detailed training and proven system that builds on what we've just spoken about in this video, just make sure you check out the links in the video description below. With that being said then guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button. In the next video, I'm gonna be going back to doing the one-to-one -one consultation calls for free, and there will be one winner in every single video, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. And with that being said then, I'm gonna stop talking finally, um, and thanks for watching.